Thank you, and good evening. I'm so glad you could share your Wednesday evening with us. So um, this next piece is entitled Wind Down, um, composed by Dr. Zachary Cairns, good friend. Actually, he lives here in the St. Peter's, St. Charles area. And just a side note, um, we commissioned him to write our new fight song as well for, for Linwood University this year. Um, I've had the pleasure and the honor to premiere several of his pieces uh, throughout the years, and I just think he's a brilliant uh, young composer with a very, very bright future. This, the, you have program notes in this piece. I can't improve on those, but it's just, just like it says. Instead of starting slow, ending fast, it starts fast and ends slow. So we hope you enjoy Wind Down.
Sweet of Old American Dance is obviously um, a set of dances, and it is. Um, and they all have a very, uh, very much a jazz inflection as well. There's six of them, as you can tell. Uh, this is number three, Western One Step. Uh, Bennett was, uh, is, a, um, is a Missouri native. He was born and lived in Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, there was a park in Kansas City many years ago called Electric Park. And I assume that there was dance places and things of that nature. That was the original title for this composition, Electric Park. I don't know where Sweet of Old American Dances came along, but they did. Um, each one of the movements is just as interesting as the next at some point this year. I hope we can do at least one more. Uh, Western One Step is kind of a, just a, as it, it's, it's a, actually in two, so I don't know where the one step comes from, but it's just a typical kind of dance that you would um, hear at um, well, all kinds of occasions, I suspect. So I hope we enjoy Western One Step.
Our next composition, 1861, um, re is reference to the hymn, um, Lead Me, Lord, uh, which was written in 1861. That's where the title comes from. And I think that's in your program notes, so I, again, I can't improve on those. Um, Jonathan Newman, though, takes those quite unique harmonies that are part of the original hymn setting and takes those and then elaborates on those, those harmonies, as well as he adds some imp improvisatory elements to this, where the members of the ensemble will have three notes, and they're just given three pitches. And they're to play those in any order, any tempo, any rhythm that they choose. And so it's this, this kind of cacophony of sound that happens, and it's just very subtle, but it adds to kind of a, maybe kind of a nervousness or of something of the piece, and then all of a sudden then the hymn comes through. And, uh, and it's just really very, very uh, lovely when it happens. Um, so, Jonathan Newman is a very young, um, very active composer um, and a favorite composer of mine, and I hope that we are able to play more of his music in the future as well. Lots of great stuff out there, so we hope you enjoy 1861.
Beautiful piece, right? Just and super interesting, yeah. There's a lot more like that by Jonathan Newman. Um, so, um, I don't know, about three years ago, the St. Louis Wind Symphony commissioned William Owens to write a piece for the youth ensemble that's associated with the Wind Symphony. And um, well, the pandemic hit, and uh, we didn't get to do it. We finally were able to premiere it this past March. And some of the students in this ensemble were part of that, or that ensemble. So if you were part of the St. Louis Wind Symphony Youth Ensemble in March, would you please stand? Yeah. There they are. They were selected for that ensemble, and um, it was a pleasure, pleasure to premiere this piece with them. So um, this is Fourth City, uh, Rise of a Metropolis. At the turn of the century, at the turn of the 1900s, uh, St. Louis was the fourth largest city in the United States. And um, I don't know where we are now, but at that time we were fourth. So, um, and so this, that's where the title comes from. It's, there's four unique sec sections that kind of denote certain events or characteristics of St. Louis. Um, this music is not published yet. I spoke with the composer and said, hey, you know, how about one more time? And he says, sure, go ahead. So it's, we... It's still, it hasn't been published, and no one else is playing this, so maybe this is the second premiere. I don't know. It's just an enjoyable piece to play. And, um, and again, it's, um, it's very unique and very characteristic of St. Louis, and we hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
we're real good in the band orchestra choir world about uh, featuring folk music from other cultures. But very rarely do we highlight our own great repertoire of folk music. Well, this is one of those. This piece does that. Actually, by Cleric Gumman, there's actually three of these American folk rhapsodies. This happens to be the second. And it's just delightful. It's all his workings around some tunes, and you've got those tunes in your program notes. And uh, it's just a, it's as much fun to play as it is to listen to. And uh, we've had, had a good time with it, and we hope you enjoy it, as well. enjoy it as well. American Folk Rhapsody, the second one.
We have one more, a very, very proper British-style march, Army of the Nile. Um, we're so grateful that you'd share your Wednesday evening with us again, and um, please take a look in your program at some of the upcoming events that you have here at the Scheidegger. Not only are there academic events there, but there's other things that might uh, be of interest as well, and we hope to see you back. We'll be back here, right here on uh, November 30, with another program for you as well. Uh, this March, Army of the Nile is dedicated to the British Army um, that was posted at the conjunction of two rivers that form the Nile, and uh, it was a major, major early uh, confrontation between Allied and the Axis powers at World War II, so it's dedicated to the British Army. Again, thank you for being with us. Hope you enjoy. <laughs>